coming next to the stage, we have someone who has dedicated his life to knots. That's knots with a K. He obtained his PhD from the University of Illinois at Chicago for work on the theory of knots. He's a mathematician who enjoys tying knots. Please put your hands together for David Krebs. Hi, I'm David Krebs, and I got my PhD in the theory of knots with a K. That's curves in three-dimensional space. I'll let you make the pun. N-O-T, K-N-O-T, okay. <laughs> I, I want to talk at first about a very pro, um, prominent trend in uh, science and philosophy. This is uh, Heisenberg, and the Heisenberg uh, indeterminacy principle uh, is an example of Occam's, Occam's razor. So Occam's razor says that if you, uh, if you don't need it, throw it out. So the exact position and velocity of electron, you don't need it, you can't measure it, throw it out. This is Werner Heisenberg, and this isn't a direct quote, uh, sorry, Ludwig Wittgenstein, and this isn't a direct quote, but Basically, Heis uh, Wittgenstein felt that uh, when you talk about philosophy, you're not making statements about reality, you're making statements about what is perceivable. And Albert Einstein, who in his special theory of relativity, threw out the idea of absolute simultane simultaneity. So that you can never say that two events are simultaneous. You can only say that they're simultaneous relative to some observer. So throwing out that underlying reality. Now we come to my PhD thesis. So this is uh, called the square knot, and uh, it's meant to be shown to be inside a, a sphere there. And what I showed is that you can't take a rubber band and stretch it and twist it and turn it and do whatever, uh, and, and uh, manipulate it into a shape that intersects that sphere in exactly that configuration. So here's an example of that. So the sphere is, hopefully you can kind of see where that sphere is. I didn't show it, but the sphere is around that square knot, and everything around outside that square knot is arbitrary. You cannot take a rubber band and manipulate it into that shape without cutting it and gluing it back together again. Now back to this business of underlying reality. So if there's no underlying reality, maybe for some things there's no underlying reason. So what I did was I showed that you can't take a rubber band, just a circle, a big circle, and deform it into that shape by a sequence of those Reitemeister moves that I just showed you. So this is Kurt Reitemeister. And it's OK. It's a matter of taste. But the Reitemeister moves are kind of a, to me, they're kind of a two-dimensional. And I was looking for an underlying principle or reason for my result that would satisfy me. And so far, I just haven't found that. So here's an example of something you can do with the Reitermeister moves. So on the left, we have our big uh, circle. So that's your unknotted rubber band. That's your big rubber band. And you can put a twist in the bottom, and that gives you that bottom crossing that you see there on the right. And then you can take that little loop that you've created and pull it up past the top strand. So remember, remembering that picture, we start with a type 1 where we create that little loop from the bottom of the circle. And then we pull the top of that loop up past the top strand of the, of, of the circle, giving us, uh, first of all, the one crossing on the bottom, and then the two crossings that you see up above. So that's something that you can do with, with Reitemeister moves. Uh, so uh, you can see that uh, clearly that thing on the right is unknotted. You can do that with a, with a, with a rubber band. Here's an example of something a little more complicated that you can do. Start off with your unknotted loop on the left, and then you introduce a little twist as we move from left to right to the second figure there, and then to the third figure by doing a Reitermeister 2 move, and then another Reitermeister 2, and then a Reitermeister 2. But you can never do that. You can never end up with that. You can end up with something with a lot of crossing, but you can never do that. You can do that if you break the rubber band and glue it back together again. 
But you cannot do that with a rubber band without breaking it and gluing it back together again. This is an example of an example of my PhD thesis. <laughs> So, I mean, it's a matter of taste, but my personal taste says that just, that just showing that there isn't a sequence of Reitermeister moves from, from, from a circle to, 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 the, to the nine crossing diagram I showed you isn't really satisfactory. Uh, knot diagrams are example, an example of, of graphs, which were first studied by the, uh, well, maybe not first studied, but the, the Swiss uh, mathematician Leonard Euler uh, with the famous, famous Konigsberg bridge problem. Um, and this is Lou Kaufman. Lou Kaufman uh, developed the tools that I used to, uh, to do my PhD thesis, to do my result on knots. And uh, very prolific and very modern mathematician. No compunctions about using the Reitermeister moves, as I do have some compunctions. So couldn't find it, uh, an inherently three-dimensional principle or reason for this but you can't do that. You can't take a, a rubber band and deform it into that without breaking it and gluing it back together again. I couldn't find a, to what was to me a satisfactory reason or principle. However, this story may have a happy ending. This is Danny Ruberman, and he's come up with a proof which, which I think is pretty good. I think it's pretty geometric. It's maybe a little bit algebraic, but it's, it looks like it's going to be good. So I'm just reading his result right now. I'm reading his paper and, and just uh, really immersing myself in his ideas. <laughs> Three-dimensional, okay, so here we have, you probably all know what that is, that's DNA. So DNA in the cell nucleus is long and stringy, just like a rubber band, and there's mixing going on. So if you take a movie of what's going on with the, uh, with the uh, DNA, then you, you, you're gonna get a lot of Reitermeister moves. And the best, the best results, I'm told they're probably yet to come, the best applications of knot theory. So, so that's it. So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>